Well everyone, iPadOS 26.2 is finally out to the entire public to test out, to try out. So in this video, we're going to talk about all the new things that are brand new, some of the new features that came out, the bug improvements, battery life, and everything in between. So without further ado, let's talk all things iPad. Let's get into it. But now, if you do enjoy videos where we go over all things Apple software with both iOS and iPadOS, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. But now, let's get into the first brand new feature in the Reminders application. Well, alright everyone, let's get right into it and let's talk all things 26.2 on iPadOS. I'm using my M4 iPad Pro to show it off. And let's first go in to the build number. So if we go into our settings, go into the about, then go down to where it says iPadOS version. You can see that we're on iPadOS 26.2. 23C52, and that's going to be the final public build. And then in terms of build size, you're looking at about an 8 gigabyte update. This one's from beta 3, but you can see that we're about 8 gigs. Give yourself at least 15 gigs of open storage to get this installed and installed correctly so nothing, so you don't run into any hiccups while installing. Now, in terms of what's new, we're going to focus on the things that are iPad OS centric, and then we'll talk about a little bit more of the iOS similarities as well. But the first one's going to be in Freeform. Yes, you heard that correctly. We have not mentioned the Freeform application, I believe, in years now at this point. So when you open it up, you get a brand new splash screen here. It says, organize your content, arrange text shapes, photos in more rows and columns. So before, funny enough, we were not able to get columns or tables inside of Freeform. You have the ability to attach objects, so drag a shape, photo, or other object into a cell to attach it flexible layout, style your tables. So this is all tables that are in free form and everything that comes with that. So if we press continue here, let's actually make this full screen. Let's open up a brand new board and you have the ability to now add a table. So it says right here, do more with tables, organize your content layout and sections with your board and more. We'll tap on that and you can see immediately you're greeted with a two by two table. So this acts like any other table, but you have right here, you can tap on here to get more rows. If I want to add a few more rows, a few more columns as well. You can also out you can also auto grow the cells as well as change them by number right here again we can zoom in and out because this is a nice little infinite canvas then we have the ability here to use all your different formatting so you're able to darken things up if you want to add a little bit more change it to maybe six point or seven point whatever you want to do fully customizable now and much easier to use especially if you are somebody who's big into tables and being able to organize everything there and after you also have all your different formatting stuff so being able to format text that's in here if you want to you can duplicate it trash it add the little three dots here which again lets you do everything that's kind of mentioned in there before Overall, just a nice little addition to be able to do that. You also have the ability to add rows and columns directly from the table itself with the little plus button, which are on the top right and bottom left as well. And you also have this button right here to hide all the different shortcuts and then press it again to bring those shortcuts back up. So I love the ability to have tables on here. Funny enough, with an app like this, you would think tables would come right in the beginning, but now you're able to do that and everything that works outside of the tables now works in each individual cell when you are dealing with these tables inside of Freeform. So that's going to be the first new iPadOS specific feature. And now before we continue, a quick word from our longtime partner, Paperlike. So if you've been following since the very beginning, you might be aware that I've been using Paperlike products for over seven years now. It is hands down my most recommended accessory for any person getting a brand new iPad. It does three things spectacularly well. It of course protects your screen from scuffs and scratches, it's anti-glare, and thirdly, it gives you that patented paper-like resistance when you are using your Apple Pencil with your iPad. But now, Paperlike is back with their brand new V3, which shows off their new butterfly applicator process, which I gotta show you because it's absolutely amazing. So the hardest part about a screen protector is going to be the application process. And I know that a lot of people struggle with the dust, the bubbles, and the misalignment. And that's what this new V3 uses in their three-part system. First, you get the butterfly tabs built into the protector itself. Then there's a nice little helper tool, which is multifunctional. It's a card that doubles as both a dry wipe and a mechanical alignment frame. And then finally, their brand new app-like full-screen digital instructions that walks you through every single step of the application process directly on the iPad. How this works is actually geniusly simple. You first clean your iPad with the included wipes, dry it off, and then align the protector using the helper card. Once it's in place, you simply pull out each butterfly tab one at a time using the smart hook, letting the protector glide onto the screen perfectly. And then to finish it off, you use the clever Pac-Man trick method to push out any bubbles from the center all the way out to the edges. And then the result is a flawless, bubble-free, perfectly aligned paper-like screen protector every single time with no stress, no guesswork, and you're not getting this big old plastic frame for a one-time use that you end up just throwing away to help you apply it. So if you've ever struggled to apply a screen protector and you've always wanted to try the Paperlike but were afraid to ruin it, now is the perfect time to try it out with the brand new Paperlike V3. Highly recommend trying it out if you do have an iPad. It'll be the first link in the description down below. 
big shout out to Paperlike for partnering up with 9to5Mac over the last coming months and years, and now back to iPadOS 26. The next one is going to be Split View. So Split View was kind of the only form of multitasking for a while on iPadOS. Then they kind of got rid of it with the new windowing mode here with 26.2, even though it was still kind of here. But let's see what exactly what that looks like. So let's show this off by opening up Safari first. So if I open up Safari, let's go with a new complete window. So Apple N, we got a brand new window here. As you can see that other Safari one is behind it. We'll move that out of the way, but this is gonna be your Safari window. We'll go to nine to five. And now before, if you did wanna go into the side-by-side -side split view, you would have to do one of these, long press on here, move it to the left. And then again, let's say if I wanna open up another window, open up a new window, then I go here again, long press on here, and then open up to the right. And then technically, even with 26.0 and 26.1, for me, this was enough of a split view, right? But again, it was a little bit more of a, more of a hassle than it was before to grab a split view. So now I can do it more similarly how I did it before, where I can grab this, move it over here, drag it into place, let go, and now I am in split view the same way that I was before. So that is something to take into consideration here when it comes to the new split view, or I guess the old new split view that came to iPadOS 26. Of course, we did get the inclusion of slide over, at least a version of slide over. So if I long press here, and then hit slide over right here, I now get a persistent window, and then I can go back in here. So I can go in here, grab Chrome. You can see that it does change shape. Make sure that it goes into split view, and then voila, I am in split view. So that is something to take into consideration where Split View was around with 26.0 and 26.1, but now the behavior on how to open Split View is more familiar to the behavior that it was with iPadOS 18 and older back when it was introduced with iPadOS 11. So that's something to consider that Split View is now back to normal with iPadOS 26.2. And now some other things that came with the iOS update. For example, we now have in the podcast application, AI generated chapters. So if you go in here, it'll generate chapters automatically, even if the person that you know created the episode doesn't have chapters built into it. And it's also much easier to access all the information, especially the links that come with a podcast episode in the podcast application. We also now have the ability to change the lock screen a little bit. So if I scroll down here, long press to customize this, press customize. Now you can tap in here and actually you have a slider to see how much liquid glassiness you want on the clock itself. You know, with 26.1, we got that toggle in the settings to decide if you want liquid glass off or on. And now here we have a slider, which gives it a little bit more of kind of a, an infinite amount of liquid glassiness or not that you want right here. So for me, I think that's a great little addition. And I hope that Apple brings that to the rest of the UI moving forward. And what's nice to know here is that even though the clock size can only be big on the normal font, if you do go to these other ones, you can still have that same slider when it comes to changing how much liquid glassiness there is. When it comes to sizing it, the only one that can be big is going to be that normal one right there. Another interesting one here is going to be in your settings application. If you go into your settings and go into the password application, there is now this option called show excluded websites. So if you tap in here, it'll allow you to show excluded websites or add excluded websites where you don't want autofill to take into account or where you don't want Apple to save those passwords and usernames. So normally when you open up somewhere where there's a login field, Face ID will take over and it'll let you kind of put that in without having to physically type it out. But maybe there's some websites where you don't want Apple to have their hands in there. You can now exclude those websites with this new feature. Another new one is going to be an airdrop. So if we go into general, go into airdrop, you now have the ability to manage airdrop contacts. So what this means is that with these airdrop contacts, you share a six digit code or a one time passcode. So for 30 days, whenever you are sharing something, you can now share with that person without needing to actually know who they are, as long as that passcode has been entered and it's been within that 30 day period. So that's always great to see. And then in the games application, we got just a little bit more information, a little bit more filtering. So we go into games right here. And then if you go into your library, which is up here, you now have a lot more information on all the games that you've been playing over the years. So we can go in here, much better filtering mode and also better categories as well. So games that are on this iPad, Apple Arcade games, friends or games that friends are playing, controller support, and even more categories over here when it comes to the type of game that you're playing. You can go by recent games, name, and also game size. So all things that are just easier to kind of navigate when it comes to all the games that you've been playing over the years. And then lastly, in the health application and your sleep score, Apple did introduce a sleep score with iOS 26 and watchOS 26. But if we go down here into our sleep, Apple made two changes. First, they changed the way that it formulates the number or the score that you get. So before I was getting a very high score on days where I was getting very little sleep. And I knew that I was getting very little sleep because we have a newborn who's now about 10 weeks. So we know that lack of sleep is a thing that's happening. As you can see, woke up in the middle of the night there a couple of times. But the second thing that they did was they changed the, how they name or how they score. The second thing they did is they changed the naming way of how they score this. So before, if you tapped in here, this 84 would be more of a subjective type of title 
Whereas now, they sleep score as very low, low, okay, high, and very high. Whereas before, if I got a 90 or higher, it would be categorized as excellent. They thought excellent was a little bit too subjective. They wanted to be and use more objective language, like very high, but to each their own. Nothing really drastic change there, but overall, is a great addition. And then lastly, let's check out battery life here. So we go into battery life. The iPad is still doing great when it comes to battery life overall. I haven't really complained or had any need to really complain about the battery life, but if we go on a day right here, we use about 58% of our battery, got two hours and 20 minutes of screen on time. Wednesday, 95%, we had about three hours and 41 minutes. Could be a little bit skewed there, and I am using more intensive tasks, as you can see here, like LumaFusion and things like that. Here, 64% battery, two hours and 50 minutes of screen on time. I would venture off and say that I get around six to eight hours of screen on time with intensive use, and then a little bit more if I'm just using it for web surfing and content consumption. But that's everything new with iPadOS. But that's everything new with iPadOS. Again, big shout out to Paperlife for partnering with 9to5Mac. Let's finish up this video. Well, everyone, that'll just about do it for iPadOS 26.2. As you saw, a lot of the iOS features, of course, trickled over to iPadOS 26.2. But we've got some iPad-specific ones, like the new Split View, or I guess the new old Split View that came back, as well as bringing over tables to Freeform, which is an app that some people forget about and how useful it is. But let me know in the comment down below what you think. Do you like the new version of Split View? Are you glad that Apple's kind of coming back to the old mobile? multitasking ways or at least giving you the option with iPad OS because I really enjoy the windowing mode. I know some people are, are missing the old ways of multitasking, but let me know in the comment down below what you think and if you've tried out any of these new features and if you updated 26.2. But if you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin. And if you guys want to watch all the changes that happened to iOS, click on one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.